Okay, this is the third installment of continuity for piecewise functions. At the end of last time, I had this function. I've changed this value, but I had this rational function. Uh, it's defined by this formula, every little bit at plus or minus 2, and it's 1 fourth at plus or minus 2. The way, we, the way you want to think about this is that this is a formula that will work to give a, 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 an answer except when x squared is equal to 4, in other words, when x is plus or minus 2. And I'm trying to fix that. I'm trying to make it actually give an answer there. And then the question is, what's a smart thing to actually, a well, smart way to fix it? What is kind of the right answer? There isn't a value, so is there a best choice or not for the, for the value to put in at x equals minus 2 or x equals plus 2? We're going to discover that it depends on whether it's plus 2 or minus 2. So the question I, I, I set up at the end of last time was, is f a continuous function? But there's, there's, we want to get a little bit more precise than that. What we want to do is realize that f is definitely continuous everywhere but at plus or minus 2. Because we have that theorem that I've shown you a couple times in the book, that all of our standard functions, as long as we're not trying to go outside the domain, namely plus or minus 2 here, um, are continuous functions. If you think about the graph of any rational function you've ever seen, yeah, it, ha it might have vertical asymptotes, but aside from those, it doesn't have weird dropouts and jumps and things like that. So that means that the interesting questions are, what about minus 2? Maybe it's continuous there, maybe not. What about plus 2? Maybe it's continuous there, maybe not. So let's look first at, um, let's use this piece, at x equals minus 2. I need to go to back to blue again. At x equals minus 2, now remember, the way you carefully do this is you look at the limit. You look at the limit as x goes to minus 2 of this function. Now, re remember when you're looking at the limit of a rational function, you first want to look at which of three types it goes into. If the bottom isn't going to 0, it is not a problem at all you can just plug in. But, of course, the reason we're looking at minus 2 is because the bottom does go to 0. It is more interesting than that. Then you ask, if the top does not go to 0 and the bottom does, it's going to blow up. It's going to have a vertical asymptote. Well, let's just plug in. The top itself is a plug-in guy. It's a polynomial. You get 4 minus 2 squared minus 3 times minus 2 plus 2. That's 4 plus 6 plus 2. That's 12. That's not 0. So if I put in a number really, really close to minus 2 for x, I'm going to get something really close to 12 on top and really close to 0 on the bottom. Medium over very small is big. That's not a technical language, but the, the way to say it is, quote, this fact that we know that if the top's not going to 0 and the bottom is, then this is DNE. And if we did more work, we'd find out whether it's plus or minus infinity or exactly what kind of asymptote it looks like, okay? It's going to have something where over here at minus 2, it's maybe like this, or maybe it's going up here and down here, something like that. We're not sure exactly, but we certainly know there's something, there's a vertical asymptote there. It's not continuous there. And no note, I haven't yet used the fact that there's a function value, 1 fourth at x equals minus 2. Okay, let's say that's 1, there's 1 fourth. Okay, there's a little dot we put in there. In this case, that's totally irrelevant. It doesn't matter where we put that dot or even whether we put it in, it's still not going to be a continuous function there. An infinite discontinuity is not removable. It's not something you can, you can fix by just putting a dot in. It's a very, dis very huge feature of a function that you can't just wish away. So, at x, where am I? At x equals plus 2, the story is very different. You look at the limit as x goes to 2 of this guy. And remember, what we're doing here is, because I'm taking a limit, let's see if I can fit them both, yeah, because I'm taking a limit here, um, I'm explicitly not putting in 2. A lot of people see the 2 here and they just ju jump directly to here and say, oh, 1 fourth. That's the function value at 2. But the whole, uh, the whole question is whether that's equal to the limit value. Does it agree with going, what's going on around it? Here we're asking what's going on around 2, but not exactly at 2. 
Now, because we're not plugging in 2 exactly, we're allowed to do some algebra on here. If, if we were plugging in 2 exactly, we'd be done. We'd say over 0 doesn't make any sense. But we're not actually plugging in 2. Because we're able to do that algebra, we can do factor and cancel. Oh, yeah, sorry, I should check that it's not just a vertical asymptote anymore. Um, that's what we're going to discover, but it's not obvious. Maybe it's just the same thing we got here, and we're done. Boom. Well, I've set it up so that it won't be the same thing. If you plug in 2, you get 4 plus 2 is 6 minus 6. That's 0 on top, so 0 over 0. Remember, I'm not saying it is the number 0 over 0. We could put in quotes. A lot of people like to put, this is the situation we're in. But I always, always put that in quotes, because I'm not saying that's what the answer is. I'm s the better, better way to say it is, it's small over small. And that could be anything. We have to do more work to understand that. And the way we do that with rational functions is we factor and cancel, if that's at all possible. The bottom's easy to factor, because it's a difference of squares. The top's not much harder. x minus 2, x minus 1. And voila, there is a cancellation. Now, it's a totally new problem. What if you just gave me as a new problem, ignore the old problem for a second, limit as x goes to 2 of these guys? Does the bottom go to 0? No. So whenever that happens, you can just plug in. 2 minus 1 is 1, over 2 is 4, over 4 is 4. OK? So the limit is, is that. OK? So that's equal to the limit. Let me just summarize. The limit as x goes to 2 of f of x. Ooh, I didn't set my timer here. I hope I'm OK. Is 1 fourth. And that's why I've had a 1 fourth here. That's a smart value to plug in for this function. They're equal. This limit exists, first of all. That's really important. And it's equal to the function value. That means this, with that choice of fill-in value, we get continuity at x equals 2. What does that look like in terms of the graph? Maybe I'll graph this carefully for you in a second. But if we look at that graph, remember there was something going on over here like this. And what's going on over here is over here at 2. It's something like this. I'm not drawing, trying to draw it carefully. According to this function, it's trying to do something nice, but it fails right at 2 because I get this weird 0 over 0. But what we've discovered is there's nothing really that bad about this function everywhere near 2. This function is trying to be nice, because what, what is it in disguise? Everywhere but at 2, it's really just x minus 1 over x plus 2. That has no bad behavior at x equals plus 2, because it doesn't go to 0 in the denominator. And it's trying to have this value 1 fourth. And all we're doing with the definition of this function, let me go back to this page, what we're doing with this definition of the function is we're just trying to say, oh, okay, this wants to have the value 1 fourth. It's not able to because of the way it's written. We're just putting that in, helping it out, and filling in the, the circle. We're filling in an open circle called removing a removable discontinuity. Very different from what was going on over here. Now, there's a problem in your book, uh, maybe a couple problems, that are like this, but they have the wrong value here. So let's just change this even one more time. What if this was like 5? If somebody gave you this function, would that be continuous at x equals 2? No, because this hasn't changed. So the limit value, the open circle, is still at 1 quarter. And then someone's coming along and saying, I'm going to try, that, try to fill that open circle by putting a dot here. That's not going to work. It's a kind of a perverse thing to do, but it's good to know why it's wrong, why it's a, a bad thing to do, why it doesn't make it continuous. You have to put in the magic number here, the 1 fourth number, that matched the trend around it. And so that's a very common kind of definition of a function that you'll often see. A formula that works everywhere but at a point or two or three points, and then some fudged values. And if they're trying to do things nicely, as opposed to making up a book problem for its own sake, they're going to put in the limit value for that so that it will be a continuous function. Okay, good place to stop.